Hey everyone, in this quick video, we're going to see how you can save payment methods for later use inside of your React Native applications. And Charlie, who's been here and has been showing us tons of great um, material about how to use the Stripe React Native SDK, is going to show us exactly how this works. So Charlie, why don't you, you tell us exactly, like, why would I want to save a payment method to use later? Like, why is that important for me to do? Yeah, that's a good question. So in a lot of uh, checkout flows or even sign up flows for different you know services, what the business will have you do is kind of put your payment information down first, even though they're not charging you at that moment, um, and then charge you kind of later on uh, after you've received like the physical service, for instance, um, like after a delivery has taken place or after someone, whatever, you've done the activity, something like that. Sure. Um, but you want to save that payment information up front. So that way the customer doesn't have to go back into the app after the service and check out, which would be an awkward flow for them. Um, and kind of another sideways use case is subscriptions. You want to save a payment method now, have a, a trial period, and then auto charge at the end of that trial period. So that's kind of the same thing. Yeah, I think about a lot of times when I buy things from like online e-commerce stores and different, you know, different places, a lot of the times I actually don't get charged until the product has shown up at my door, right? And I don't have to confirm with them or I don't have to check with them, but I just see, oh, the package is here and I go and look at my bank account and then I've been charged for it. But prior to that, let's say it was like two weeks or some period of time had passed between the time that I actually ordered it and the time that it got there. In between that time, like they didn't reach out for me again to like confirm a credit card or whatever the case is. I would have already had signed up for an account. I would have already given them that information and my shipping address and all this types of stuff. But now the minute that, you know, that package is available, it's been shipped, then now I, I see the charge, right? So like this would be what you're talking about, right? Like collect that customer information up front. And so later on in terms of like their, their payment workflow, it's a little bit less nagging for them, right? They're like, hey, mm -hmm. you already have my car. Just charge me for the thing. Well, let's keep going. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. So do you have any demos? Can we see like how this works? I do. Yeah. Let's uh, let's take a look. We kind of have two example use cases here. Um, you can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Cool. All right. So we're using the same uh, kind of functionality that we've talked about in our last two videos. So that would be the payment sheet, which is Stripe React Native's kind of answer for essentially every payment situation you could kind of have in your app. Um, we obviously have more fine grained functions and, and um, UI components you can use. But at this point, we're really recommending the payment sheet just because it's such a, a catch all uh, kind of use case here. Um, and as you expand your products or expand the payment methods that you're accepting, it's going to be the thing that grows the most with you and reduces kind of your your code debt moving forward. So that's our focus today. Um, same things we've used as uh, set up before. We have our use payment sheet hook that we're grabbing from Stripe React Native. Um, this just exposes a couple functions and a helper uh, Boolean for us. So uh, the init payment sheet and present payment sheet functions. Present payment sheet is the function that kind of pulls up that bottom sheet. Um, doesn't really take any parameters or anything like that. That's just where the kind of functionality is happening. But an in init payment sheet is where the changes uh, that are going to happen today. So last time, what we were doing in uh, in this init call was passing a payment intent setup client secret. But what we're doing today is passing a setup intent client secret. So this is just Stripe jargon. Uh, a payment intent is an intent to pay. And then a setup intent is more you're just setting up something for the customer. So in this case, we're just uh, setting up a future payment to happen at some point with this payment method they give us. Um, and that's basically the only code change we're making is, is this line right here on the client side. Obviously, uh, we are getting this setup intent client secret from our server. So let's take a look at what those changes look like. Again, spoiler alert, they're really simple. Um, <laughs> we've got our, our endpoint right here. It's just you know basically 20 lines of code. Um, let's see, we're instantiating our Stripe uh, class right here, creating a demo customer, um, getting an ephemeral key, same ephemeral key we kind of created uh, the last time for, for any other payment sheet flow. And then the difference here is we're using Stripe.setupIntentsCreate rather than Stripe.paymentIntentsCreate. So pretty simple change. Um, passing that back, 
And like I said, just passing it into our init payment sheet function, and we should be uh, good to go. Let me just update that right there. Um, and yeah, that should be uh, should be ready to show it off. So looks like we're ready to hit setup. Boom, there's our payment sheet. Uh, we can just pop in our test card. Let's see here, and zip code should be good to go. Let's say setup. Awesome. Uh, so let's take a look over here in the Stripe dashboard, and we can reload our customers page. And you can see right here, we've got a new customer, React Native video series that was on the server side, uh, and then our payment method right here, that 4242. So we know we've created a new customer, and we've got their payment method saved. So we could, on the server side, you know, create a charge for this payment method, this customer, uh, basically whenever you know, we say their sweet potatoes arrived or something like that. So what I think is interesting about this part, particularly what you were just showing, um, how the customer got created. I'm going to guess that if I have a, a workflow where, you know, I'm signing up my customer, like, you know, they're creating the username and their passwords and all this types of stuff, that would be a great point for us to inject this type of functionality, right? Like, again, like I, I own, you know, Charlie's cookie store, right? And Charlie's selling cookies this summer. And, you know, part of your flow is, hey, sign up with your email address or, you know, your phone number or whatever thing you want to use for authentication. And then also, you know, like, like accept that payment method as optional upfront. So that now later when, I don't know, you decide to buy, you know, Charlie's chocolate chips, right? Like we could charge them later and we won't have to be constantly adding them. But then another thing too, I notice is that I could, I'm guessing I can have more than one payment method registered. Like I can have multiple credit cards or even multiple bank accounts if I wanted to. So now from my user experience perspective, you know, I could present them with, hey, well, these are the ones that you have available, or these are the ones that, you know, will be applicable for this product or thing that you're trying to buy, you know, and I'll give you the option to like choose from a drop down or some type of selector now, and then yeah. I'll charge that very specific payment method based on the ones that you have saved. Exactly. So one use case, I was just talking to uh, a customer using, you know, our Stripe React Native library. And what they do is they have, you know, their, your user profile settings. And they just have all of the customer's payment methods there and a whole bunch. Basically, this is the code that runs into the background is this setup intent flow. Um, so you can add a new payment method and choose your default payment method that Stripe will kind of go to immediately. Um, but yeah, so a customer can have a whole bunch of payment methods, cards or you know banks, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Nice. And I know you had mentioned um, subscriptions earlier. so. I'm guessing it would be, again, very, very similar thing, right? Like instead of me, you know, creating a set of intent for like, like some future fixed amount or, or something of the sort, like I can set it up so it could be like a recurring amount. Yeah. So exactly. The changes that we're going to make again, spoiler alert, very small. Um, we're actually not going to be changing any of this init payment sheet because we're still technically passing in a setup intent client secret. The mm. only change is going to be actually on the. Uh, server side. So we're going to hit a different endpoint right here. Uh, and little, let's check that out over here. Um, so this is our new endpoint that we've got payment sheet subscription. You can see we're doing very similar things right here. Um, creating a new customer, you know, initializing Stripe, creating an ephemeral key, all that stuff. Uh, and the new code is right here. So we've got our new subscription that we're creating with Stripe's node SDK. Uh, attaching our customer and then saying, you know, what items that are included in this subscription and also adding a trial period. Um, but what Stripe does when it creates a subscription is it actually creates a pending setup intent with that subscription. So mm -hmm. what we're doing right here is just uh, retrieving a setup intent using that ID um, and then pulling the client secret for that setup intent. So this is our what you can think of it at is, is the subscriptions setup intent um, and, you know, responding to our client the same way we did uh, with our last one right up here. So setup intent, setup intent, client secret, you can yep. see we're doing the same thing. Um, so in the app, we can basically just change that endpoint and kind of move forward. But maybe we want to change some UI, like say, sign up for sweet potatoes every month. Um, and then instead of setup, we'll say subscribe. subscribe. Yeah. Then that should 
There we go. We see it there. Um, and let's just double check. We've got everything right. Should be good to go. We click subscribe. We see that same familiar modal, which is great. We're going to just type in our credit card information. One, two, three, four, five. Set that up. And cool, subscription was successfully created. So if we navigate back over to our Stripe dashboard, check out our subscriptions, you see our new subscription that we just created um, with our test product. And yeah, there's our payment method. You can see 4242. But again, your customer could attach any payment method they want. You saw Link in there, Apple Pay, um, and you can add more as you want, totally on the server side, like we talked about. Uh, in our first payment sheet video. So, yeah. Awesome. So, Charlie, thank you again, man. Again, every time you come on, you show us about all the amazing things that we could do with that React Native SDK. Uh, for those of you that are watching, if you're interested in learning more, make sure you check out the links in the description of the video below. And also, make sure you check out some of the other videos. We've talked about some of the other things that we could do with React Native and Stripe. Thank you so much, and see you in the next video.